Manhunt is underway at this hour in Cairo, Egypt. Dozens of people, mostly women and children, murdered when a bomb tore through that city's main Coptic Christian church on Sunday during services. There have already been several arrests, but more suspects are still on the run. This is hardly the first time Christians in Egypt have been under attack. Joining me now is Bishop Angelos. He's the general bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church in the United Kingdom. Bishop, thanks a lot for joining us. Good evening. So this is a horrifying attack, obviously, but it's not isolated, as we just said. Do you think Christians who seem to be under attack from all sides in the Middle East have a future in that region? There's definitely a future. I think it's very challenging. It's very difficult. There are obstacles, and there are, there are major problems. Um, the Christians of Egypt represent now about 80% of the Christians in the whole Middle East, uh, representing 15% of Egypt. And we've seen a very, very quick and rapid uh, decrease in numbers across Libya, Iraq, um, yes. Palestinian territories, even Syria. Yes, and, and, and Lebanon. And yet there's been virtually silence, um, relatively speaking, from Christian leaders in other parts of the world. You would think, since there does seem to be a concerted effort to drive Christians out of these countries and attacks on them because of their faith, that you would hear more from the Archbishop of Canterbury, for example, or Pope Francis, but you don't, and I wonder why that is. Well, actually, a slight correction. Uh, in the past, I would say you're right, but in the past couple of years, uh, both Pope Francis and the Archbishop of Canterbury, who who's a, who's a personal friend, um, have responding, uh, responded. I was just speaking to, uh, to contact the Archbishop yesterday. We're having a memorial service in London as soon as I get back on Wednesday for the people who have died in, in London, in, in Cairo. Yes. So there is a lot more interaction at the moment because there's a lot more visibility, I think. Well, let me give you a specific example of what I'm talking about. So under American law, people who are being persecuted for, among other things, their religious faith, have a claim on refugee status. And yet the Obama administration has admitted virtually no Christian refugees from Syria. I think out of the 10,000 we've admitted so far, roughly we've admitted 57 Christians, which is about half of 1%. Clearly they're discriminating against Christians. And yet you haven't seen leaders of Christian faiths in America or in Europe decry that and say, wait a second, why aren't we allowing Christian refugees in in greater numbers? Why? I think there's a major flaw in the system. We just had the patriarch of the Syrian Orthodox Church in London last week, and I organized a meeting in the House of Lords for him. Um, the problem is that these schemes bring in refugees that are registered under the United Nations UNHCR um, um, system. Christians tend to be cared for by Christian communities, and they're yes. not, they're not uh, registered under that scheme. So we need to encourage governments to work with the UN to get the Christians registered, because as you say, there's a double discrimination. They don't have the protection of the camps, and at the same time, they don't come under the schemes for refugee status. So I very much agree with you that this has to change. Now, I don't want to single anybody out, and I think there's a lot that's admirable about Pope Francis, but in, in May, he went to Greece and was among refugees and brought, I think, about a dozen of them back with him to Rome. There was a Christian family there of refugees. He did not bring them back and didn't use that opportunity to decry what some call the genocide of Christians in the region. How helpful would it be if Pope Francis were to stand up and say, this really is a huge problem and we ought to tie it to our refugee policies and rescue some of these people from the dangers they face? Would that help? Again, I think it would be very helpful. As Christians, and, and I think I stand in the same place, even though I'm an Egyptian, I'm a Coptic bishop, I think we need to respond to the refugee crisis uh, blind to faith and equally. Of course, at least Christians should be proportionately represented. And I do think that under these schemes, uh, whether it's church leaders, whether it's nation states, whether it's organizations, they need to bear in mind that Christians need to be represented at least proportionately so they can have an equal opportunity to leave the difficulty and the struggle that they're living through because they are persecuted for their faith in many cases when they go into camps they are persecuted for their faith and then they have no way out do you think my last question but uh, you've often heard the government of syria the assad government of syria described as a protector of christians through the years do you think that's accurate How, were they a protector of christians I think when you look at the Middle East broad, in a broad sense, uh, whether it's uh, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Libya, the existing governments gave a status quo and a balance. The removal of these governments created a vacuum. And yes. so 
that in itself created a challenge. Now, Christians are resilient by nature. They're hopeful. They continue to live. They continue to be a reconciling force, and their presence is important. But before we scream for uh, democracy and democratic change, we surely must have an alternative. Otherwise, we create a political vacuum, and then those most vulnerable, whether they're Christians or Yazidis or anybody else, end up bearing the brunt not only of the vacuum, but also of, of oppressive uh, groups and regimes that come in. That is such a wise point, one of the many unintended consequences. Bishop, thanks all for joining us. Thank you for all you do. I appreciate it. Thank you.